sign. Um, but it's still, um, he isn't ruled out, but still will be a challenge. Sure. Um, Pep, obviously this game is taking place against the backdrop of Ukraine. You were there in 2018 for the Champions League final. I mean, how difficult is it to concentrate fully on football at the moment? And what's your reaction to the Champions League final being moved to Paris this morning? Yeah, what, ha what happens at the moment is uh, truly awful. Um, it's, it's so serious. And as a football coach in this moment, sitting here in front of a sports journalist, I think it's not the right moment or not uh, the time to speak uh, my personal opinion. Um, it doesn't feel appropriate, but what I can say is that I'm a father. I'm a, I'm a brother, I'm a son, I'm a human being, I'm a husband, so it's hard, uh, we think, uh, with all these people uh, there, and um, I think it's the same reaction I, uh, you guys have, it's just really frightening at the moment. And just and finally for me... Course, and of course, oh yeah, if, you want to give a, if I have to give a reaction in the football way, of course it's the right decision to move to the Champions League final. Yeah, and just I finally think, for me... I think, to be honest, I think each war is a, is a true disappointment for humankind. And just finally, Pep, would you like to see the club and the Liverpool fans make some kind of gesture of solidarity with Ukraine on, on uh, Sunday? I don't think it's fair to, 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 to question Pep. I think we're just in the question we love the Champions League final. Pep's up an answer to uh, and, a, and a reaction to. But I think it's, uh, it, it, it's as Pep pointed out his answer. As a football coach, it's a preview of football match. Uh, and rather than focus the questions on the match, we're here to preview. Sure, thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. We'll go to uh, Juliet Ferenson from the BBC in the room next. Juliet. Um, hey. Hello there. Yeah. Yeah, has there been a, a real focus on the cup competitions this season, the domestic cup competitions? Because these are competitions that Liverpool haven't won for quite some time. Yeah, we have we have tradition in, in both. Uh, we have history in both, of course. Um, um, yeah, it's it's a, this is a competition where we where we want to bring young talent, where we want to showcase, where we want to launch. So that's really important. Uh, I think if you look at the best clubs in the world, what do they have in common? It's this one club mentality, and our journey in this league cup shows that we exactly that. Um, um, now. It's about the journey, but now we are two days away from the final and uh, we want to go in it with all we have and, uh, and uh, make it a proper game. And uh, We can't wait, of course, to, to, reach, uh, to go to Wembley and uh, see all the fans and hear them and feel them. And uh, uh, for Liverpool, it's uh, um, not just for us as a group, as a staff, but for the whole club, it's just uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big compliment because... But I said uh, this competition is so much more than just the first team. It's a, it was a, a proper compliment to our academy as well. I think that's what's come across in the, in the players that we've spoken to and, and Jurgen as well. It's the fact it's not just about the first team. It's like the under 18s, the under 23s, all these yeah. players who contributed to yeah. to this this ride. He called it that you've been on. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I think example Queef is a really good example. So if you look. Him is going to play the final if everything goes well tomorrow, of course, in training. But him reaching the final, it's it's um, it's it shows that there's an inside path for all young goalkeepers inside our club. So it's a compliment for um, for the goalkeeper department, of course, to have this trust for the manager to have this trust. But this is what I like. Uh, it's possible for a young keep goalkeeper in our club to reach a final with time, with a lot of training, with a lot of games, with a lot of steps. But, uh, that's really nice to see. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to Mike Hughes for a couple of events in Karma and then to Neil. I think maybe one from Donald Chris. Mike next. Pep, it was really interesting to uh, to listen to Jürgen Klopp in the aftermath of the victory against Norwich and he was talking about the switch to a 4-4-2 and and how well it worked out. And, and he answered the question by saying it was actually Pep's idea. <laughs> uh, it shows in a lot of respects how, what sort of guy Jürgen is, you know, that he, he doesn't want to take all the praise, but yeah. it shows how close you two must be in terms of, of how you work together and, and, and try and get the best out of the players. How does it sort of work out in terms of 
when you're chatting during the match or pre-match team selection plans? How, what's the division of labour there? Uh, first of all, Jürgen is so much more than a colleague to me. Um, so I'm I'm really grateful and really happy uh, the way we work together. Um, it's a it's a commitment based on respect. It's a commitment based on trust. Uh, with this trust comes a lot of freedom. With this trust comes a lot of opinion. Um, we um, I think uh, it's not just me and him. Of course, it's so much more backroom staff who constantly are in our ears to make decisions or to put us in the right path. So it's um, it's just if you see our team, the togetherness, this comes from something. And if, if you as a staff, if you have us as a as a as a group of people who show uh, leadership, um, it's probably the most powerful tool uh, eh, that uh, we want our team to be how we are. And um, that's why it's so important that he they feel and they see that uh, the the manager, the assistant manager, the other assistant manager, Pete, Vita. Jack, John, Tafa, Andreas, all of us are so close. Uh, and uh, there's a team behind the team. And I believe that um, a manager is as good as the team behind the team. So. Liverpool have a, a really good record in the League Cup under its many different guises. The first time they've been to the final for a while. Probably like never before, you, you can't get a ticket for love, no money. It's the most high profile league cup final that, yeah. that there's ever been and i don't know whether it's something about the dramatic victory against leicester uh in the quarterfinals but but it, it's there really three, by the way there were three subs as well at half time against Leicester. but anyway we're three or behind anything <laughs> yeah but what i mean is that there's something about this year's yeah. competition the liverpool fans it's, 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 it's english, caught fire it's english football yeah what makes it so special it's not the league cup it's english football uh, how many? 72? Uh, nice. Nine, sorry, 92 clubs. And England, the history of the English Cup competition proved that each league can win from another league. So it, it gave already so many incredible games, not just the top, but you will see now in the final. It's two Champions League level teams are going to compete for a trophy. Uh, on this level, we are speaking. Uh, we go going there. Uh, to compete against the champions of Europe. We're going there to compete against the champions of the world at this moment in time. And we know that Chelsea is a, is a top, top team with so much, not, not just experience, but technique and experience. And I feel that they are the team who always find the spaces the opposition uh, doesn't occupy. So we leave space behind our three forwards or four, depending. And they use. We leave space on the opposite side, they use. But uh, they... We leave spaces between the lines. They use so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, we have to be spot on tomorrow. Um, uh, but uh, at tomorrow, so in, in two days, and but we really look forward to it because we know, and this is what the manager always says: we don't want to be the best team in the world, but we want to be the team who beats, or is capable in each moment of time, in each moment of the season, to beat the best teams in the world, and that's what we're going to try in two days. Thank you. I could ask in particular. It's English football. No, I'll speak to you later about this. <laughs> so, Carl, and then you will go to uh, Neil Jones and I think John. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, do, in generally, in terms of preparations for a final, is there anything you have to do differently because it's a final? And specifically, with that in mind, do you have to deal with the younger players slightly differently? Uh, for, uh, no, because uh, I think uh, when we started this project, over time in this project, uh, we came to the, to the conclusion that the way to be successful in the schedule of English football, but also in all these competitions, is to just to focus on the next game. And our group created this mentality that each next game is a final, because otherwise we could never have reached the levels we reached or the special games we reach, we see each game literally as a final, so nothing changes in this. So if we speak about Leicester, if we speak about Norwich, if we speak in the in the in the Premier League or in the Cup, whereas most of the times are of course final. So nothing there changes. We always prepare uh, and then uh, prepare well. We make a, a lineup, but at that moment in time, for us, the best lineup uh, to play our way of football. So uh, that means intense. <laughs> And um, 
and then we want to attack match day. So always keeping the same routines, preparing each game. And as you as you see over the last years, uh, we really see, and you have to believe me in this, we really see each game as a final. And just on Wednesday after the match, I asked Jürgen about Joel's goal, and he said it, it was something he sp- they thought could speak and do against Leeds. But Absolutely. We've seen him do that a lot this season. Yeah. You know, bring the ball out defensively yeah. and running forward. It is, can you explain if, how much you encourage him to do that and, yeah. and what benefits it has? Yeah. To the so, team uh, uh, as always, we're constantly searching for new weapons. We're always searching for new dynamics to bring the ball out of the back and. Uh, we felt that, um, or we, we still we see that our team became uh, uh, better in recognizing when to step, when to switch quick, and uh, with Joel, but also with Ibu, also with Joe, and, and with Verge, with times going into midfield like that. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, when they are the free player and when there's space, uh, they can really go in to commit and. Um, it's not the first time that it happened because we all we call this the classic QL dribble. <laughs> so he does this a lot in the small side of games, for example. He comes a lot one to one against the goalkeeper when you play 5v5 five or 66. Uh, but um, I really believe that uh, our positional game or the way how we bring out the ball from the back improved massively over the years. So, and this is one of this um, uh, one of these steps we had to make that our center halves are able to. Basically, you want to create the last pass from everywhere. And that should even be a centre-half who is able to play the last pass. Even Ali should be able to play the last pass. Then you see that the team is connected and that's a good sign. Thank you. I need you to give me the technical explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. I want it. Thank you. You talk about Kuri. I think um, Jürgen yeah, said last month, he said not everyone at the Liverpool was always convinced that he was going to be a goalkeeper at the play for the first yeah. team. How did, he, how did he make that next step and what does it say about him and, and the coaching staff? Yeah, but it, yeah, I'm not sure who he's referring to, uh, who didn't believe it. Uh, I was the coach of the young 16s when we signed him. So he came into in, into my team and we saw from the start that he was, um, all the things that he's shown now on a really high level he had at that time. So it's just to get in each healthy pathway to a first team, it's about fate. And it's about patience. And that's hopefully what you see, what we try to do with all of our talents. Um, and on the right moments, the right games, and the right moments, the right steps to make the uh, next step. But uh, if I speak about Kuif, so I, then I have to refer as well to Adrian. Because Adrian played against Preston. And I don't know if you remember, he saved, I'm going to say our ass, two times <laughs> on 0-0. Two incredible saves. So... Uh, what I like as well is that uh, Ali played the semi final, so it's a compliment for John for his goalkeeping uh, team because we use all three goalkeepers and it's not Lasseter, uh, Daka shoot, he saves, uh, Drewsby Hall, he saves, he saves two penalties, and uh, Norwich, he saved the penalty to bring us through, Arsenal, uh, Martinelli comes through, Loesch, uh, first one sh- uh, first corner shot, he saves. So he earned the right to play in this final and probably that's what I love the most that, um, and I said this before our talents they don't let us down and they never did so um, I like that Kweef is making the next step and we're just really happy that we don't have only Kweef uh, sorry Ali we have Kweef and we have Adrian and on the moment uh, Adrian is called up he made a difference and that's why as well why we, why we are in the final I think we'll be the final one. We'll get, I think the final one will be done, unless there's any more from you guys done to finish with this, this section. If, that, if there are any hands up on the, uh, on the Zoom, let me know. If not, I think this concludes the uh, first part of that question. Yeah. Yeah, just the, um, the younger lads who we played in the earlier rounds, like um, Katie and Connor, Tyler, yeah. Harvey Blair, Owen Beck, there's yeah. a couple of others. Obviously, the squad's so big in, at the minute, and yeah. the senior players are all fit. But yeah. What do you do with them? On Sunday to, to make them feel part of it because they've all contributed to get yeah. to where you are. So what what do you do and is the process with them? Yeah, first of all, we speak a lot with them, so it's not like that we do something different uh, now. They they know and they feel that they are our uh, our talents and they are part of our squad. Um, and what's important is that they travel with us. So at least the ones who are constantly with the first team. So I said I'm a Kate. Um, so even when they don't reach the squad. They will travel mm. if, uh, because 
if I say no a name, you're going to see this. <laughs> and you guys believe me that I say a name. So anyway, um, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's, if you're part of Liverpool Football Club, you will not, um, you will don't get a better or worse feeling if you're selected or not. You get a feeling by the people who are working here and the people, and not just the coaching staff, all of us. So, um, we believe in this pathway of the first team or uh, this inside pathway to bring talents and, um, to give chance and to launch. And that's why I'm extra proud. I think that we reached the final in this uh, competition because it was, this competition was all about the journey. And we made the final. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I think that concludes the first part of our presser. Thank you very much.